Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody. Militia Man and Crew here. Uh, we're starting another day. We've had some really good information. It's going to be really kind of brief, and when I say brief by my standards, it's going to take a few minutes, but hey. Um, everything that we've been talking about uh, with the Militia Man and Crew, Oh, but back up. Everybody just know this, that this crew has been around for a long time. Um, the, the original members, they're all still with me, okay? And, well, I'm sorry to say that, you know, there's a couple of us uh, that have moved on. But the bottom line is they're still with us. I believe that. And uh, fireworks to them, uh, Toby and Day Trader, okay? But... Ultimately, what, what, why we're still here is because we have a passion for the truth. We have uh, strength because of integrity. And we do the best that we try to be as uh, accurate as possible. We're not always, but we, we own up and we do our thing. But because of the fact that you guys have helped support this, uh, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. And, and I mean that. And uh, it's nice to get uh, messages. It is really nice. I can't answer all of them. Uh, n none of us can. But the good part is, is that uh, we still show up and we still give give you good information, so that you can feel um, somewhat com confident. Not always, but somewhat confident that um, the progress is amazing. And I think that you guys can see that on your own. More and more people are starting to see that. Wow, we truly haven't seen any of this in the last. Uh, well, in some people's cases, 20 years, 21, possibly, 2003. Um, I'm not that long. I go back to 2010, 2009, real close. Um, but the cool part is, is that I did my study, and when I found a document uh, by the IMF, is what triggered me. I got challenged by a friend doing gold and silver and stocks and all that kind of stuff. A little story of mine, but the bottom line was... Um, I've always been a man that says, what I, I do what I say I'm going to do. I try to anyway. We all, we all do that. You can understand that. You know, it, it feels good to say, you know, when someone asks you, can you do this? And you say you will and, and you don't, ugh, kind of feels bad. But the cool part is, is that I did my research. And one of the thing, key components was I found a document that resurfaced recently uh, that was from the IMF. I think it's 198 pages. So if you see it, I think it's written in 2005. 2008, 2005. And that document talks about Iraq. And in that 198 pages, what I found was the number 322. And that's why I went, okay, you asked me to do this. <laughs> now I'm in. And so ever since that time, I've been here. And so I followed along. I learned from all the different places on the internet and, uh, and just grew along. And I, and I ended up in uh, a specific place. And in that specific place, most recently, prior to me doing Militia Man and Crew, it was a great experience. Had to reconcile a lot of things to be able to do the way that I do it, but I did. And all of a sudden, it, come, it came time for me to not be able to give for free, okay? Not be able to do that, because I did it for free for many, many years. But at one point in time, real estate, da-da-da-da-da, things happening, you know, all that, um, it came to that time where uh, it was God, in my view, that said, it's time. And so that's what I did. And with the help of uh, many people, allowed me to, to help you help me and others, the crew. So thank you. That's a, it's a big thing. And, uh, and I think I did the right thing. I know that I did the right thing. And I think that God's hand was in that. So thank you for being with us, and then I'll move on. But the cool part is, is that uh, it's just getting better and better for our investment-wise. And look, today we got an article uh, on the backside of some dated stuff I want to go back because you, I think you all know by now that uh, there's a lot of times that I like to go back in time. And because if you go back in time, you can see the progress. You can go, what, what were they saying at this point? Uh, where are they now? And... You go, wow, we didn't know this, we didn't know that, they changed this, they changed that. But don't, sit, don't think of it in a terms all the time of like, oh, they're always kicking the can, because that's just not educated as I'm concerned. 
what it is is that we didn't have blockchain in 2010 no different than we didn't have very good internet dial-up you've got mail what was that 1994 95 or not even maybe 98 i don't remember but the point is is that the the systems have changed circumstances on the ground have changed 2003 2004 5 etc they were still writing their constitution or getting it together you know 2003 forward but then remember we had we had hiccups we had ISIS. We had met other things. But at this stage of the game, though, um, there's been a root out of corruption, for instance. Um, you've seen all that. You, you saw that um, Hader al-Badi, for instance. He was, we thought he was really close. We liked the man. He didn't get it over the edge. In fact, the United States president didn't even give him the time of day. But then you move forward, we have a few other hiccups and things of that nature, but then all of a sudden it got really heavy when it comes to specific people, specific entities, financial entities. Uh, they started coming around, and so they started seeing the progress. And then once they placed uh, Shia al-Sadani into his position, or he was able to get to that position on his own, he has been a rock star. So if you go back to... November 2022 to present, fast forward, then you can start seeing things and then you start th seeing things change quickly. It's, it's been a, probably a tough job, the guy's really tired, but what end of the day, where did he show up? He showed up in the United States of America. And we hadn't seen the, well, back in 2023 that the tripartite budget got, lo got launched. We even had the emergency food for security law or food security law uh, the year before that we thought was going to be it. But then we got the tripartite law, 23, 24, 25 budget. And what did it do? It set the stage for a different budget. First time ever, 23, 24 budget. And that's part of it is definitely operational, but the other side is investment. And so when you have investment, you, and then you're trying to convert to the private sector. Now you start thinking about who's going to help facilitate that. We'll get into that effectively budget schedules 23 24 25 budget budget schedules amendments they haven't been done yet okay okay add in a little bit of turkey showed up al sudani back up even a little bit more turkey show turkey united states shows up back up one more time iraq shows up to the united states and gives the allocates, accolades to al Sudani many times. Motorcades, all that. We've already done it, been over it, but bottom line, he was here for seven days. Goes home, takes a few days rest, whatever, and on a Monday, 22nd, they have meetings with Turkey. So they seal all these memorandums of understanding in the United States of America, contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden they show up in one day Turkey signs 26 memorandums of understanding, but they talk, they talk about them in a sense of that they are almost like contracts. Memorandums of understanding can have clauses, from my understanding, that if things are met, they become contracts. Okay, so we see the water, 10 years. We see this, first time uh, Erdogan has been in Iraq in uh, 13 years something like that, maybe it was 11, long time. So, but the point is, is that you haven't seen the oil pump through the Iraq pipeline, nor have you seen it go through the Turkish, uh, I mean, the Kirkuk pipeline through Turkey. I mean, that's like billions and billions and billions of dollars of revenue that's not going into Turkey. So anyway, if they turn that on, we haven't talked about that yet, or we might not deny even, but Remember, that's, that's just a component of it. The water issue. They sign a 10-year agreement. Al-Sudani, uh, the president of Turkey, they have an agreement with 10 years of water. What's that going to do? That's agriculture. So take it out a little bit further, and that goes to agriculture, which, is, which will eventually, if you, if you produce enough wheat, if you produce enough dates, you produce enough, I don't know, kumquats, for instance, you can ship them out around the world. It's export.
because Iraq is a mainly an import country. So that's their whole boy, point is to uh, make these industrial cities to uh, reestablish themselves as to not only, and we talked about this, not only to have the inputs, but they'll have the output side of each equation so that they'll not only take advantage of their natural resources, those huge deposits, those trillions of dollars of the deposits, they'll take advantage of that on their own and they'll actually learn to or reactivate what they already know, how to produce them to sell. And so anyway, so the budget schedule has not arrived yet. There you go. Why? Because there's something in there that's called these amendments that we believe are going to uh, come to the fruition in a very short period of time. Because why? Because they say so. The budget schedules will arrive next week. That's a deputy that said that today. It says that uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Al Karawi it says, quote, the 2024 budget schedules will reach parliament next week, according to our expectations. All right, so we all know that Iraq, well, maybe we don't all know, some people are new, but Iraq's week starts on Sunday. So from Sunday on, there you go. There's a little bit of a window. Uh, pretty much ends on uh, Thursday, banks close, kind of like that, that type of situation. Um, the Finance Committee will discuss all these items during its sessions, it says. Uh, there's a vision regarding resolving many files, including Baghdad's lecturers, administrators, and allocations. They say that we seek to guarantee the rights of all segments of the budget schedules in addition to creating high flexibility uh, in their implementation. Keyword, implementation. That's what we're, There's a theme about that in the last couple of days. One of the things I like to find is like, what's the actual theme? They use buzzwords. I think you've heard me talk about it. Um, they do this with the implementation through coordination and with all the relevant parties. And it's no, noteworthy that Parliament is awaiting the schedules. The government is in order to study it before voting on it so that it can take its course in actual implementation. Implementation. So it's not the HOR's job about the, the uh, exchange rate. Um, what their job is to do is that once they get it, they vote on the amendments or they vote on the amendments to allow there to be an adjustment, okay? Then you're gonna see how this, we'll see how this plays out. Anyway, I would have to say that um, they have basically put themselves into a position, Iraq is now, that is really, really um, down to the wire for us to um, get that budget to a place that they can do what they're going to do. It's almost like kind of a no-brainer that uh, if they have an exchange rate that needs to facilitate all these deals, all these, you got United States, you got Turkey, and that's just recent. You have so many other countries around the world that have already done all their stuff it looks like United States and Turkey were the last two key indicators that show that um, things are going to happen. So this article says that May 9th, Iraqi Council representatives will end its second legislative term without extension. So in other words, they're going to end their, they're saying that they're gonna end their second legislative session without extension. Okay, so they're not gonna extend it. And so it's customary to extend the legislative term for one month. And if the budget's not sent, it will not be extended. So, okay. They, they kind of muddy the waters just a little bit, which it says is that it, this does not mean that any time limits for reviewing discussions, approving and returning them to the government and the Ministry of Finance. Again, in preparation for dispersing them to the formations of spending units, which means delay in the aspects of the process. So they are basically still suggesting, though, they're going to try to do this without extension. I'm fairly sure that Al Sudani is looking at this as that you're going to get your schedules, you're going to get them in a timely manner, and likely, if it's necessary for us to do what we have to do, we're going to take care of that first. And firstly is if you have an exchange rate, um, then we won't worry about leakage coming out of the parliament, um, going home and doing things that they're not supposed to do kind of a
corruption situation. Not that, that we're talking about corruption, corruption, but, but the bottom line is it's kind of like insider trading. You can't be doing stuff like that. Can't be taking advantage of people. They want this level playing field as level as possible. And I think that's what we're talking about here is that um, if the budget is sent this week, Parliament will, Parliament will extend its term. So if in fact, if it comes in this next week, that and it lands even like one day before the final day, they will extend it because they have no choice. And so that choice, because they have no choice, is probably not going to happen. That's what I get from this particular article. So I'll let you guys filter through it. Um, one last thing that I made a note of, it says there's no need to extend the legis the legislative term unless the budget law arrives, like I just said. And we support the extension in the event of an emergency. Okay, cool. So in other words, if it arrives and they need extra time, so be it. Well, if that budget arrives, no. If there's an exchange rate change and then the budget arrives and they need to make amendments, then they'll do what they need to do in the event of an emergency. And that would be an emergency. And I think it would be a good emergency. All right. So next thing is, is if we go back in time, we go back, back, um, a lot of people um, were not too happy when a lot of the more recent JP Morgan bank stories were around. And I even mentioned that I had my own little bank story and I didn't get in too many. I brought in one and I left it alone after that because they're true. But the bottom line was some of the blowback was like, well, it's a little bit insensitive. Maybe we should keep it alone. But the, but the cool part is, is that I went into Chase Bank. I won't say where because that's not, probably not fair. But they didn't know who uh, the vice president Dan, Daniel Zalico was. And he was a manager. And so I was at a retail place, but anyway, so opened up an account, made a little deposit just because I knew that um, what I had in my hand was a description of Daniel and a description of this specific article. And what, I'm going to go over that article. But at the end of the day, he had no idea what I was talking about. So that's fair. So people that say that when they go into the retail side of things, um, you don't get a reception like some of the other folks do that go into the private banking side. This isn't a bank story, but this is a story of what's on Patreon with Militia Man and Crew. Okay, Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash MM and Crew. You'll go to forum, and if you'd like to come into the Discord, um, there's a way to do that. The, all the news is there. Um, but the thing cool, the, the cool part about it is, is that uh, uh, the gentleman educated me in the sense is that when I showed him the article, he didn't know who the man was. So that tells me that's okay because it's relatively new and down to the his level, he wouldn't have a need to know. That's not normally on his radar. He hasn't been studying the Iraqi dinar and the project to elite zeros for 10, 15, 20 years, like some of us have. Okay, he, did, he just doesn't know. But here in this article, if you see this, the article starts out with, uh, will we see JP Morgan in Baghdad? Question mark. And so they go on to say that J.P. Morgan, uh, vice president at that time, vice president um, to Baghdad does not seem surprising in the context of the developments of events and changes taking place in the Middle East due to the repercussions of the energy crisis caused by the war in the Ukraine and its impact on the economic map in the world and in addition to growing Chinese presence in the region. Now remember, this is back in J June of 2023. We're almost a year later. It goes, the Middle East, through a number of trade and economic co uh, cooperation agreements um, concluded by China with the countries of the region in the context of working on the Belt Road Initiative. Well, we all know, we should know, that the Belt Road Initiative is the same, effectively, as the Development Road Project. Al-Sudani decided to say, no, in my country, it's not going to be the Belt Road, it's going to be the Development Road. It doesn't matter, the same access. You cross one street, you just go through 
you go from the Silk Road, and all of a sudden you hit a stop sign, then it's the development road, and then, I don't know, what's it going to be when it gets to Europe, when it gets to Gaza? It's going to have a different name? I don't know. But once it leaves the country, that's the way it goes. But anyway, um, it says that the, the, the context of working with the Belt Road Initiative, as well as the expected changes in the map of international trade, on the Iraqi land area. So they've talked about that specific, hey, if you're on our land, it's um, different. The announcement of the development road project, which we talked about, or talking about, through the dry canal channel between the Arab Gulf and the port of the Turkish directions towards Europe. Uh, JP Morgan is the main player in f financial exchanges, trading in the world as the main provider of financial services in the world and the largest bank in the United States. Don't forget that, because if you remember, this is in June, fast forward a little bit, a couple, three months, UN assembly meeting, al-Sudani, okay? They talked about what? Iraq was going to be the savior, effectively, of the financial world and the largest banks. Confidence, remember? Then Dabo, you're gonna find it. They talk about this. It's a theme they talk about. Just like implementation, that's going to be a theme. Uh, JP Morgan had previously handled the process of financial um, processes, financial transfers for Iraqi cha trade with China via the SWIFT platform last February. So that goes back, not June, but to February 2023. They clear, basically, Iraqi trade with China on the SWIFT pl uh, platform. What is that? The ISO 20-0-2022, right? So they did that in February. So it's over a year now. And to do what? To facil facilitate payments from the Iraqi banking system to the Chinese banking system with the aim of what? Financing private sector imports directly. And they use the term private sector imports. What's this new system? What's this new development road project? What's the 2024, 25, 23 budget about? Private sector. What was the economic situation, the strategic framework agreement in the United States of America? What did they mainly talk about? The private sector. Who did they invite? Who did they make contracts with? Private sector. What did Turkey do? Same thing, strategic framework agreement, just it, security, what else? private sector. They call it a quadripartite agreement because it was not only Turkey, it was Iraq, it was Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. So private sector imports directly, water deal, 10 years, implementation. Okay, all of those buzzwords should have every single investor in the, in the world right now that do this go, wow, this is really happening. Okay, so this is still back to the June part. JP Morgan has a role in a number of issues related to management of Iraqi reserves and liquidity management. Liquidity management, all right? As well as the technical support provided by the aforementioned bank to the Central Bank of Iraq and the banking sector in Iraq. According to the data relevant authorities, in addition to the constant keenness of Iraq side to show the extent of the Central Bank's commitment to applying international standards and combating money laundering and terrorist financing and to strengthening relations with central banks and countries involved in that system that deals with trades with JP Morgan. So Iraq is meeting all that criteria or at least are, is making an effort at that time to do so June 2023. So that's about the time that I bring in this to this gentleman and he didn't quite know anything about it. Give him space. It's okay. They'll, they'll figure it out. What suggests the existence of important and prospective roles for the aforementioned bank, which is J.P. Morgan, whose features can become clear during the current stage, which paves the way for the existence of a banking industry in Iraq that rises, paves the way for a banking industry in Iraq that rises to the banking of industry in the world, to a level of the banking industry in the world and which establishes a common ground between J.P. Morgan and the Iraqi banking system. And from here, it seems, according to this official statement, the Central Bank of Iraq requested Daniel Zaliko, which is the VP at the time, which is an open representative office in Iraq, which is to open a representative office in Iraq, 
And this office may be the beginning of a direct application for supervision, for supervision, control, and real breakthrough for the global banking presence. A real breakthrough for the global banking presence. Okay, so again, it's talking about Iraq doing what? Helping with the global financial system. Uh, support of element for attracting investment capital in preparation for filling the banking arena free from the presence of globalization banks. So they're doing it on purpose and they want to do it um, in a manner that is, uh, instead of being completely global, probably a little bit uh, somewhat controlled. So anyway, um, on April 21st, 2024, I don't think anybody had this uh, until today, which was really kind because a, a, a really nice gentleman, um, actually from Pakistan, got a hold of me today through a, a, one of our brilliant members um, in our Discord chat room and our forum. He has a relationship with them. They've been friends in business together for many years. He, he said to me, I want to bring this to you. And yes, please feel free to use it. I threw it over to Samson and she vetted it and she says, well, I hadn't seen it yet. And so, and yeah, it looks good. Well, okay, so here it is. Um, JP Morgan's building in London. They showed that building, it's kind of proud. It says, uh, the Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudan re recently discussed the government's effort towards financial and banking reforms. With the chair of the governing board of the JP Morgan Development Financial Institution, DFI, which is who? Now it is Daniel Z Zelika. Okay, he was a vice president, and so it looks like he's now the chairman of the governing board of the JP Morgan Development Financial Institution. Wow, so it, since June of 2023, it's just under a year. Um, sounds like he's got a promotion. The Iraqi prime minister uh, talked about the steps taken to develop the government banks, illustrating that the government reached agreements with international consulting companies specializing in banking reform. I'm not sure exactly which accounting firm they're talking about, but there were 13 different names that they dropped in specifics that they would be using. I don't know why I have E and Y, or Ernst & Young. Um, don't quote me on that one. But I, it wouldn't be surprise me because they're big. Okay. Um, KPMG was one of those companies that was involved in this too. So just don't forget about that. Um, it goes to say that Al Sudani has highlighted uh, back up, Iraqi Prime Minister taking steps to develop the banks, illustrating that the government reached agreements with those international consulting companies. Okay, specializing in banking reforms. Okay, I went over that. Al Sudani highlighted the need to continue cooperating with the U.S. Department of the Treasury, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the International Monetary Fund, and other international financial institutions. So again, here what Iraq's involved in dealing with the global financial system. All those members are part of the global financial system. Uh, you can tell me if I'm wrong. But so Zalikow, I wish I could pronounce his name, commended the efforts of the Iraqi government in activating, developing, rehabilitating government and private banks, as well as the procedures related to providing assistance to private banks. All of the above has been underway. All right, so it started in, 20, in June, and he talks about that, and then now they're talking about that. They're actually doing some of these things, and they're doing, they're providing uh, the procedures to do so. J.P. Morgan's official also stressed, which is Zalikow, that stresses that the bank's support for the initiatives of the Iraqi Development Fund, that's investment, that's the Iraq Development Fund, and its readiness to offer assistance in training and going into partnerships. So that is huge. So JP Morgan is completely 100% involved in this. And so when people say that they weren't involved, they're not involved, well, I'm sorry, they, they're 100% involved in Iraq becoming um, a, a beacon of light for the financial system. Last January, during a meeting to the sidelines of the participation in the World Economic Forum held in Davao. Oh, remember I told about the UN Assembly? Now we're gonna be talking about Davao. What was, what was the name of that program, that forum? It was Restore Confidence, okay? Iraq was part of that. 
we know that the, these guys met in, on those sidelines in those meetings. So it says Al Sudani discussed JP Morgan's possible participation in the Iraqi government's efforts to adopt electronic payment applications in Iraq's market. So they did that in Davo. Restore confidence was the theme of that. All right. Two parties reviewed the Central Bank of Iraq, CBI, and JP Morgan's, I'm sorry, Central Bank of Iraq, which is the CBI, and JP Morgan's technical, technological efforts to generate concepts for digital trading for central banks. So the Iraqi Prime Minister indicated that his government is eager to see JP Morgan and the Iraq Development Fund work together more closely. He emphasized the Iraq is making progress towards banking and financial reform in a way that would support the growth of this important industry. That's kind of somewhat being light. Anyway, I guess you guys can see that where this is headed. So some of the some of the views that I had today and um, I, I can go over that. Um, of course, that there, you know, there's an article that we have. Uh, these these articles are in Patreon, and what are they doing? Um, they're presenting the relationship with J.P. Morgan Bank and Iraq. For all of those that may still question whether or not J.P. Morgan is dealing with Iraq or not, they should be alleviated from now. They should be okay. Uh, Mr. Zilako, he has been working well enough and on the matter of the of Iraq, and apparently enough to know that. What I just exposed was J.P. Morgan, vice president to chair. Uh, he was the vice president. Then he went to the chair of the governing board of the J.P. Morgan Development uh, Finance Institution. I don't know. I don't know how big that of a jump that is, but um, it sounds like it's um, pretty important for that to happen. Um, it was pointed out in early on that J.P. Morgan was fully aware of the moves that were being made from the Silk Road Initiative and the Development Road projects. We went over that. J.P. Morgan was involved in facilitating payments for the Iraqi banking system to the Chinese banking system for financing private sector payments for imports directly. So they were doing directly doing all this stuff. It says, um, it's still likely the case. It's still likely to increase significantly with the signing of that quadripartite agreement that I mentioned. Turkey, Qatar, right? Um, United Arab Emirates with Iraq. Uh, the role that J.P. Morgan has been playing in a variety of issues related to a management of Iraq reserves and liquidity management, as well as technical support, at least since June of 2023, for the Central Bank of Iraq, and as also as far back as clearing financial transfers between Iraq and China through the SWIFT system uh, for the direct payments for imports in February. So we, we already went over that to just we're doing a little bit of a recap of, of how this rolls, okay? Iraq has come a long way with financial and banking reforms. J.P. Morgan has been there helping the central bank and private banks all along the way. Sudani, in recent visit to the United States, has highlighted a need for cooperation between the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the International Monetary Fund, and other international financial systems. And may I say that we already know that um, Al Alok just the other day, yesterday, the day before, did a, a, a an interview that specifically talked about. Um, sending a letter through Central Bank of Iraq, Finance Ministry, Tafe Sammy, to the IMF, okay. It goes on and says, all of this work is done in, in, uh, in work is done now or has been a work in progress. Basically, progress is showing that this long week visit in USA and that strategic framework agreement with economic, banking, and financial reforms at the forefront uh, within the Iraqi government program. All of that is in with that program. Uh, it's within the one that al Sudani has underway. So you all know that it, it, it changed. The strategic, strategic framework agreement was about security. Well, now it's more of an advisory, we went, but we've been over that. Um, it goes on to say that um, al Sudani has, his advisor indicates the development projects will be started in April 2024. Al Sudani and his advisor state that in April of 2024, investment budget, right? It says that as much money as 50% of the GDP within this month. So they're going to be spending money. And that's what Al Sudani told us within this month. So um, some sanctioned banks, we understand we're going to have their sanctions lifted. 
So will they be lifted prior to those funds being released? That's going to be to be determined, but that's the thinking. Because why? Because they, they just said in their article, they said they had some issues, banking s sanction issues. Um, not everybody's going to be, go all, not all banks were going to be allowed to take advantage of it at first. They're going to have to clean up the books, or do what they have to do. And some of them may take as long as out to August. But does that have any effect on what they're going to do in the meantime? In my view, absolutely not. We're going to find out. It says the effects will be powerful from things done that are ongoing, things that will restore confidence. That was Davo, remember? As they stated, um, the largest banks and financial institutions in the world are expecting. All of this stuff is in writing, it's in Patreon, and everybody can come and see, see what we have to offer. The value is, is immense. Samson's work is incredible, and I'm so glad that we've been able to do what we do the way that we do it, to be able to bring everybody this information. Um, the team effort, you guys, is, an, again, everybody is like thankful that we're here. And one of the main things is, is that why do we do it? We're here to help. We're, we're here to help. Al Alok has mentioned in a recent speech that the Iraqi financial system, as well as the system in America, must be protected. He just said that. The Central Bank of Iraq is in the process of organizing matters in order to achieve this great goal, which will give positive messages to the financial institutions of all over the world. Al Alok from the Central Bank and the Tafe Sammy from the Finance Ministry having sent that letter to the IMF recently may be a key to understand as to why the confidence is ready or is about to be ready to show herself around the world. I don't know. It's powerful. It's very powerful. So there you have it. As brief as I could. Thank you very much for being with us. Hey, it's a, it's a wonderful day and all of us would like to see you subscribe, hit the like button. And uh, again, as we move forward, um, it's going to be a lot to learn still. Uh, I don't think we're going anywhere. So if you like our content, please, uh, whatever you want to do, PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button. If you like this content, subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated, as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much, and have a great day.